Can the Genesis story of creation be trusted to mean what it says? Or is it simply an allegory? Was the earth created in six days? Or was it six billion years? Were Adam and Eve real people? Or are they simply symbols? Is evolution a scientific fact or a mythical fantasy? And does it really make any difference whether this world and life are the result of special creation or evolution? Stay tuned for an expert's response to these questions. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy. My colleague Nathan Jones and I have a very special guest in the studio with us today. He is Mike Riddle, who is a very gifted and spiritually anointed teacher of creationism. Mike, welcome to Christ in Prophecy, brother. Thank you, Dr. Reagan. Always good to have you. Yeah. Good to have you here, Mike. Nathan. Mike. Thank you. I hear you have a very unique ministry. Could you tell us a little about it? Yes, we have okay. a ministry called Creation Training Initiative. Okay. We started it in about 2011. And our purpose is based on 2 Timothy 2 2. Makes it easy to understand. 2 2 2. Just put <laughs> Timothy in there. Where Timothy's, or Paul is talking to Timothy, he says, Timothy, now that I've trained you, you go out and do what I just did. You go out and train others how to teach also. Amen. And that's what we do in our ministry. We have training courses that train people how to speak and teach on biblical creation and apologetics and how to defend their faith. Excellent. And I have attended that course twice, and it's a week long, and it is absolutely fabulous. And it's all hands on. I mean, people are given assignments, they get up, they make presentations, they have to make defenses of the faith. It's an incredible course. And I tell you, the only entertainment you get in that course is at night when you're dreaming. <laughs> Very of course, practical, though. One Very thing I noticed, though, is that whenever the students make a mistake or whatever, they're on the floor doing push ups. Right, yes. you have a push up box in the back of the room. <laughs> That's just the Marine Corps thing. Can't take the Marine <laughs> yeah. out of the man. No, you well, can't. Well, brother, I'm anxious to jump right into this because we got a lot of material to cover, so let's do that. And, and I want to uh, start out with one of the questions that I posed at the beginning of the program. And, uh, about it's a, about a website that's related to an organization called BioLogos, and on that site, and I quote directly, they have this statement right at, on their home page: BioLogos, which is a Christian organization now, invites the church and the world to see the harmony between science and biblical faith as we present an evolutionary understanding of God's creation. What is BioLogos and what is your response to this? Well, BioLogos <coughs> was founded in 2006. So they, they're a relatively new organization there. But their main mission, as, as you just read there, is to train Christians, specifically pastors and Christian school teachers, how to teach evolution from the pulpit and in the Christian schools. That is their main mission, to do just exactly that. They hold conferences and they actually pay, help pay for teachers and pastors to come to their sometimes week or two week long classes. So they've got a lot of money. They've got a lot of money. They, they've, they're into the multi millions of dollars in grants from organizations to teach evolutionism. Now you mentioned oh. they're a Christian organization. Yes. That's Christian in name because I think when we dig very deep we'll find out that they really don't believe a lot of things about the Bible. The Bible is not their authority. Would they consider themselves old earth creationists? Absolutely. Billions and billions of years, because that's what evolution is. That okay. is the holy grail of evolution. The so, core when we of it. say old earth creation, we're then saying it to create everything we have today, God used evolution over billions of years to get us to where we're at. No, no, they don't even go there. They don't go They're there. even okay. worse than that. They don't even say God created necessarily. <clears throat> evolution happened. It, oh. From the cosmological evolution, the origin of the universe, stars, galaxies, God didn't do that. He may put the first matter there. Wow. But then he, they believe in biological evolution from amoeba to man. They believe that man evolved from a lesser type creature, like an ape like creature, all the way. So they're 100% evolutionist. Is it a deist type <laughs> philosophy where God wound up the universe and then left? That's pretty much it. Okay. Pretty much it. God started it and then the Big Bang and everything well, else. Let me is read you a evolution. statement by the president of this organization. He said, and I quote, it is a travesty. That young people who began the journey of following Jesus are told that they have to believe something which a little science education makes clear 
cannot possibly be the case. Well, here's, here's a major problem with biologos also. There's a lot of major problems. They equate science and evolution. They use the word science all the time, meaning evolutionism. And evolution is not science. It's a philosophy. So we, that's one of the things. They, they get these children and they make Christians feel bad that they're not believing in science. And at time, we all believe in science. Creations do believe in science. Yeah. We believe in the observable science, but they're saying evolution when they mean sci when they're saying science. And you know, it's a, the, one of the fundamental principles of science is observation and testing. Yes. Who can do that with the creation? We we only have one witness, and that's God Himself. Right. But when you turn to evolution, no one saw the Big Bang. No one saw a star. No one's ever seen a star or galaxy form. No one's ever seen the origin of life by naturalistic processes. No one's seen one creature evolve into another. No one's seen billions of years create a big canyon. So what have we observed in evolutionism? Well, uh, Darwin <laughs> said that uh, uh, in his writings, let's just be patient because the fossil record will ultimately prove it. Oh, we own the fossil record. <laughs> yes, <laughs> now the creationists own the fossil record. There are no transitions. <laughs> no. Yeah. When you go down to the bottom layers, can I use some technical terms here? Yep. Pre-Cambrian and Cambrian layers. If you can't remember that, I just say bottom layers. <laughs> the bottom layers. What we find down there are fossils of single cells, then fossils of very complex creatures with zero transitions in the middle there. Zero. Wow. Even the evolutionists recognize this. In other words, we own the fossil record right there. Yeah. Well, how do they interpret then Genesis? I mean, do they look at the Bible as just a book of poetry and then they allegorize it? Or do they... Do they even consider the creation account? <clears throat> Number one, <clears throat> the BioLogos puts their understanding of the scientific evidence above Scripture. Okay. In other words, they use science, their understanding of science, not real science, but their understanding of science, then map in Scripture to support their understanding of the scientific evidence or evolutionism. So in order to do that, they allegorize all of Gen the first several chapters of Genesis, meaning they're not real history. That's going to present a major problem with the rest of the Bible. Yeah, it's the foundation <coughs> that the rest of the Bible stands right, on. Right, because the first three chapters is the reason the rest of the Bible had to take place. Is that why Satan always attacks Genesis? Because if you can kill Genesis, then the faith in the rest of the Bible goes away? Wouldn't it be nice if our seminaries knew that? <laughs> Wouldn't that be <laughs> My great? seminary taught me that. <laughs> if the, uh, a lot of our professors out there don't seem to know that. Yeah. Well, the Bible <laughs> says that death came as a result of the sin of Adam and Eve. Yes. What do they say? Um, no, no, that's not true at all. We're misinterpreting the Bible right there. That's what they're telling us. Well, it says it point blank. Yeah, I know. And, and Genesis is not poetry. It's not an allegory. When you study the Hebrew language, it's written in the narrative form meant to be taken as historical fact. But they ignore that. In other words, BioLogos uses a very bad hermeneutics. Well, what did they take from <coughs> Christianity at all then? I mean, it sounds like they've ejected it all. It's like any of the major cults. Okay. And this goes right back to the Garden of Eden, what Satan did. What they do is mix a little truth with false doctrines to make it sound inviting. Okay. And that's what BioLogos has done. They bring in God, you go to the website and it sounds pretty good. They believe in the resurrection. Mm -hmm. They believe Jesus died on the cross in the resurrection. They believe that. But you go back and look what they don't believe. They don't have an answer for why Jesus had to go to the cross. In other words, you were just talking, Dr. Reagan, that what do they deal with death? Where did death come? Death is a natural process that occurred over billions of years of evolution. But that's a direct violation of Scripture. It is. It destroys the entire foundation of the Gospel. And you know, I was just looking up here, Exodus 20, where the Ten Commandments are given. And when it gets to the Sabbath day, it says, Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. And it goes on to say, For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. And that is not poetry. No, it is not. But <clears throat> we're misinterpreting that. That's, that's one of their... How yeah. would they interpret it then? Because you'd have to do some handstands, right, to get yes. to that interpretation. And that's what they're doing. Yeah. But see, what they do again, they focus on children okay. to go get the children to say to their parents, what do you believe about evolution? Then they work on the parents. See, they're, they're infiltrating into the Christian schools by training teachers, getting with the youth. They hold youth conferences. And again, they have so much money, they can help pay for people to come to their conferences. And where does all this money derive from? One of the big ones is the Templeton Foundation. Oh, well. okay. they, they got a $9 million grant right Say off. Say no more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then they continue to get grants. So when you go to their classes, you don't have to pay a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, 
makes it easy. Well, uh, what difference does it make whether you interpret Genesis literally or symbolically? Wonderful question, because we get that from a lot of people in churches today. It doesn't make a difference. It's a secondary doctrine. Well, <coughs> secondary. Yes, and that's kind of excuse. My reply to that is, what's the difference between a primary and secondary doctrine? Most people can't tell you that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but here's the difference it makes. Let's start with the gospel. We're familiar with John 3:16, for God sent His only begotten Son. I like to start there. But well, what about John 3.17? For God did not send His Son in the world to condemn the world, but the world through Him might be saved. Mm -hmm. That word saved is critical to understand, to understand the Gospel. Yes. Why do we need to be saved? What do we need to be saved from? That takes us back to Genesis chapter 1. And it starts off, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. He's the Creator. He sets the rules and standards for how we're to live. Then it says His creation was perfect. This is where we differ from Biologos completely. Uh, it says it was very good. Yes. Now, does that mean perfect? Well, Deuteronomy 32 verse 4 says the works of God are perfect. Mm -hmm. Creation is the works of God. So, God called His creation perfect, not billions of years of death and decay. Yes. Then God gave us one rule, Adam and Eve, one rule. See, God's talking to a literal Adam and Eve. Biologos does not believe in a literal Adam and Eve, which destroys the Gospel. Yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, uh, to me, if you cannot believe what Genesis says about creation, why should you believe what the New Testament says about the resurrection? Exactly. And, and here's the contradiction. Or what there. it says about the second coming of Jesus. Yes. See, they will call people who believe in a six day creation, we're not understanding, we're misinterpreting the Bible. But the atheists will do the same thing to Biologos. Biologos says they believe in the, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but the atheists will come back and say that can't happen. Why? Because scientifically you can't be dead for three days and come back to life. Mm -hmm. Biologos is inconsistent. They believe what they call science. They interpret everything based on their understanding of science. But then they go right back and disagree and say the resurrection must have happened, but it doesn't agree with what they know about science. Mm -hmm. W.A. Criswell, who was the pastor of First Baptist Church in Dallas for 50 years, used to refer to people like that as having leopard theology. He said, they only believe that the Bible is inspired in spots, yes. and they know which spots. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, there, there's a yeah. serious problem. And there, there's some warnings in Scripture. I'd like to read a couple of warnings. Yeah, sure. I just love to make sure I get the Scriptures right. In, in um, Isaiah 5, verse 20, there's, there's a Scripture that I think talks right to the members of Biologos. Isaiah 5, verse 20, it says, Woe to those who call evil good. And good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Biologos is using something called evolution to interpret God's word. They're using something evil that goes against the nature of God mm -hmm. and calling that light. And to me, evolution is one of the greatest fantasies that man has ever created. It's like standing in front of Mount Rushmore and saying, wow, isn't it amazing what can be happen accidentally as a result of erosion? Yes. yes. It's just crazy. Well, wasn't yes. Darwin's initial theory was that the single cell was a simple organism? Yes. And yet they find out that the single cell is a mass of complex oh, yes. structures, yes. mitochondria for energy, and uh, it has a permeability of the skin layer and stuff like that. And Darwin at that time didn't have the ability to analyze no, the cell. No, right? he didn't. And uh, what's great today is we have an organization out there called the Institute for Creation Research. Mm -hmm. They're going to be doing amazing research right now on the cell and the DNA. And the more we find out about that, the more we find about how great our God is, Amen. not evolution. Well, let's pause for a moment. We'll come back and discuss that. Welcome back to Christ and Prophecy and our discussion with Mike Riddle about creation versus evolution. Mike is the founder and director of a creationist ministry called the Creation Training Initiative. Mike, I took my kids once to the Perot Museum and on the wall there's a picture of this volcano exploding and two Australopithecine, an Adam and Eve type character looking in terror that they might be wiped out. And it seems not just the evolutionists but the creationists are now depicting Adam and Eve as some sort of caveman or monkey man. Is that true? Was he developed as us or was he more primitive? Well, the Bible clearly teaches that God created Adam and Eve fully grown, fully mature. Okay. But what's happening now is in our seminaries, this Christian seminaries, they're, some are now teaching Adam and Eve are not real people. And this again where Biologos has a big influence and other ministries have a big influence. In other words, it's not 
academically right today to believe the Bible mm -hmm. is what's happening. And our seminaries <clears throat> just simply aren't doing their job anymore. They're being academic, but they bought into the world too much. Okay. And, and yes, uh, Adam and Eve were fully 100% human, but you, when you look at Christianity today there, they're starting to train our children that that's not true. In other words, <clears throat> you send our youth off now to our Christian universities and Christian seminaries, and they're going to come out of there, a lot of them, not believing the Bible anymore. What's well, a lot of museums, too, you see, where they have dinosaur models, you know, they move, they roar, and all yeah. that, but now they're starting to glue feathers all over them. Oh, yes. <clears throat> we own dinosaurs. I like to say it. We <laughs> own <laughs> dinosaurs. I mean, we should never lose the dinosaur discussion. No. Guess what they found in dinosaurs? Soft, Soft tissue. tissue. Yeah. Red, red <laughs> blood cells. How do they explain proteins. this? Oh, there's some unknown process that preserves soft tissue for 65 million years. That's oh, interesting. That's their, that's their claim. <laughs> well, fossils of rock? Yes. Uh, and the fact that we're finding DNA in there, which has a half-life about 521 years, and we're finding carbon-14 in almost all the dinosaur bones now, mm -hmm. that completely refutes the evolution story of millions of years and the whole geologic Well, college. you just raised another issue, and that is a very important one, and that is that DNA. When, yes. when DNA was discovered, I thought, well, this will surely be the end of evolution. How can they believe that DNA evolved? It's like saying that a software program evolved. Yes. Now, how do they handle that? Here's, here's the answer. Over billions of years, millions of years, anything can happen. Now, <clears throat> when they say millions of years, I trained students how to do this. Millions of years, what they're really saying is, we don't have the observable evidence, just believe us. Just believe us. It's not science. Uh, their God is time. Yes. If yes. you just have enough time, enough monkeys, and sitting at enough type, typewriters, six billion years, they will write Shakespeare. And that's what they teach. And that is not science, but yet they own the education system. Here's the problem. Whoever owns the education system owns the next, okay, generation. next generation. And this is where the churches have fallen yeah. down. Mike, I used to do a lot of programming. When you're talking about DNA, DNA is the programming of mankind. We haven't yes. fully mapped it out, or it's beyond us, it seems, at this point. But when I did coding, if you even put a period or a comma in the wrong place in the code, the program shuts down. It stops. It doesn't know what to do. Yes. And if evolution had required to build DNA over millions of years slowly, the organism would have shut down, stopped, never lived. And so, how do they get past the simple fact that if DNA is such a co complex program, which I believe proves a creator, how do you get the fact that you can't have junk DNA to create a creature that lives? You, you mentioned something, junk DNA. There's no such thing as junk DNA anymore. They've done away with that. They were teaching that for quite a few years. Yeah. Now the projects have been c finished and there's no such thing as junk DNA. And okay. how do they get around this thing? Again, throw more time at it. Throw more time at and it. Always the answer, keep throw time. teaching the next yeah. generation evolution happened, evolution happened, and they start believing it. Mm -hmm. And the other part is they do not allow on this subject critical thinking and analysis of evolution. Okay. That is disallowed in the school system. Well, you know, back in the 20s when the Scopes trial was going on, all the, 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 the evolutionists said, we just want equal time. Just yes. give us equal time. Mm -hmm. Now it's, we want all the time. Yes. We are the scientists. Creationism is just faith. But evolution is as much faith as anything I've ever run across. It's all faith, and it's a false faith. And it's another religion. It really is a religious concept, I and mean, it's not a scientific yes. People thing. choose it, to believe it. It's not that yes. the evidence leads them there, right? Yeah, they choose to believe it, and okay. they're forced to believe it in the school system so they lose their grade. Yes. Yes. And that's what's happening in our universities. So basically we've turned our school system over to humanists. That's right. Who are teaching a humanist philosophy which really is a religion. And they're teaching basically there is no God. There is no moral code that we are responsible to. And of course this is what they cling to because even the evolutionists will say point blank if there's a God then we're responsible to somebody yeah. and we will not be responsible to anyone. That's right. And we have organizations out there under the name of Christianity teaching just that and training our next generation to believe in evolution. You can have harmony. They call it harmony between science and the Bible. Well as a creationist I do believe science will always, true science will always agree with God's yes. words. But what they're saying is evolutionism. When they say science, they're really meaning evolutionism. Yeah. But they get us for not believing science. See, they're, that's a logical fallacy right there. And they're, they use these things all the time. Well, the Bible is full of science, right? Oh, it's never been wrong scientifically and has a lot in there. Okay. That's that, one of the things I love about your course is you teach kids and people. I mean, you have all kinds of people there, grown people, uh, all, all kinds, not just kids. But you teach them how to think logically and how to 
defend things logically, not only biblically, but logically. Right. Yes. We want them to have a reason for why they believe what they believe, not just say the Bible says it. God never told us to go do that. Yeah. He gave us three pounds up here. <laughs> <coughs> some people like to use one side, some people like to use the other. I always like to say some people just don't use it. <laughs> but we're to be thinking Christians. Yes, yes. And, and we do believe in good science. We don't have to make excuses for the scientific laws. We accept the scientific laws. It's the evolutionists that are constantly trying to get around the scientific evidence. Well, how do you deal with the, uh, the, the, the uh, assertion that, well, we have dating mechanisms, and these dating mechanisms show billions of years. Well, I had a professor ask me that during a uh, Q&A time at a secular university, and I saw a student sitting up there. So, I thought, I'm going to try a tactic. If, sir, I said, sir, if you would mind telling us all about the assumptions used in radiometric dating, then I'll tell you how it operates and everything. He would not do it because yeah. he didn't tell his students about the assumptions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The assumptions destroy the dating methods. <clears throat> Don't they take, like if they get date something and they get wildly, radically different dating, they'll always take the oldest one? I mean, I've heard of, of like animals that have been dated and the foot is millions of years old and the leg is thousands of years old. I mean, they, get, they even get different radiometric We dating. can take one rock sample, date it five different methods, get five different ages. Yeah. That involves ages. And they always take the oldest. And right. whenever we know when a rock sample was formed, we never get the correct age. So, why okay. would we trust it when we don't know when it was formed? You know, one of our trustees is, is a renowned scientist. In fact, he was selected as the most outstanding young scientist in America when he was about 35 years old, research scientist. Graduate of Stanford. He has a um, PhD in astrophysics. And uh, he, during his PhD oral exams at Stanford, they discovered he was a believer. And they were shocked. And they said, Why didn't you let us know this when you? He said, I became a believer while I was in your program. They were even more shocked. They said, How could you? He said, Through the study of geology. He said, When my study of geology, I said, How can this be? And I looked and I looked at various possibilities, and I finally concluded the only way you can explain the geological record is a worldwide flood. You know, I'm glad you mentioned it, Dr. Ring. There are many scientists today. The Institute for Creation Research, Answers in Genesis, Creation Ministries International. Real scientists. Real scientists. Most of them got their degrees from secular universities. Right. Why don't the Christians follow these scientists yes. versus the ones that have compromised God's Word? And speaking of the flood, I don't know if all of them do, but many of them who deny the Genesis record as being literal also deny a worldwide flood. Yes, uh, BioLogos denies a worldwide flood. Uh, the whole ministry called Reasons to Believe of well, Ross denies the worldwide I, I flood. I saw a cartoon recently that showed the flood with a, just a, a big wall of water. Yes. You know, it just, that's, yes. it, 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 but it didn't go area, beyond right? the Middle East. Right. In, in the so, Bible, just the Middle East is what yeah. they're saying. Yeah, is the, in, the flood right. Water. In the Middle East here. And, and the Bible clearly okay. says it covered the highest hills, the mountains plus, by 15 Plus, there's cubits. evidence all over the world of the yes. flood. So, how did they deal with that? I mean, they just say it's not true? They just say it's not true, and everything is evolution. What's at the top of Mount Everest? Seashells. Seashells. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and guess what? They don't have legs, which means they didn't walk up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just so disconcerting. What you're really getting down to here is the fact that we all have the same evidence, but it's the way you interpret right. that evidence. And Perfect. we have, we own the science. And if the Christians would just come and listen to this, if our university professors would drop their pride and go back to the Bible, the Big Bang never happened because the Bible says God spoke and it all happened. That's not a Big Bang. Mm -hmm. Our best scientists in the world cannot even create one single small biological protein, not even one. So, don't even talk about the rest of the cell. We have seen large canyons form rapidly. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, with the, uh, what was it, the uh, Mount St. Helens? Mount St. Helens. Yes. Mount St. Helens. And we know dinosaurs. We had a Grand Canyon overnight. Right. <laughs> and we know dinosaurs have only been dead a few thousand years. The scientific evidence is overwhelming. Why can't people trust the real science versus? The intimidation from groups like BioLogos who do not believe the same God that we believe. Well, I think you nailed it. Intimidation. I yes. mean, when you, it's a group Absolutely. thing. If you're the only lone kid, my mm -hmm. daughter, she's the only lone kid in her class yes. who's saying, hey, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Now, the teacher is, is sympathetic yes. towards Christians, but the rest of the class says, well, you're stupid. You, you should yes. be believing this. They have to conform or they're out ostracized. What we need, and I like to use these words, we need pastors today with courage, honor and commitment to God's Word. Amen. And that is not happening. They're, they're, they either don't know the full gospel, they don't believe the full gospel, and they're, they're willing to just compromise on the Word. And I think they often do not understand 
that when you spiritualize the book of Genesis, the impact that has upon yes. everything else. Mm -hmm. We need to retrain many pastors or we need to get in and talk to them. But unfortunately, they don't want to listen to this. They think BioLogos and other ministries have it all figured out with the science and they're not even willing to investigate it. If they just listen and trust God's Word for a change and not worry about somebody in their congregation may not like them <laughs> and might leave and they, they tithe. Stop worrying about what people think about you and start worrying about what God thinks about you. Believe God's Word. Yes. Welcome back to Christ in Prophecy and our interview with Mike Riddle about creation versus evolution. Mike, tell our viewers how they can get in touch with your ministry. Well, they can go to our website called creationtraining.org or they can email us at info at creationtraining.org. And what about your website? Tell us about well, it. Well, if they go to our website, one of the things they're going to see is we offer actual training courses, one day training courses up to a five day training course. And we come to your location to do the one day training courses. And also, Dr. Reagan, we have many 30 minute videos they can watch for free on our website. Ah, great. Over 80 different videos on all the topics. Wow. And they're great because I've watched them. Well, thank you. <laughs> Well, folks, uh, that's our program for this week. I want to thank you very much for being thank with us. It's uh, just been a thank real you. blessing, always a blessing to have you with us. And folks, I hope it's been a blessing to you. I know it has been. Hope you'll be back with us next week. Until then, this is Dave Reagan speaking for Lamb and Lion Ministries saying, Look up, be watchful, for our redemption is drawing near. If you would like to get a video copy of Dr. Reagan's entire presentation titled The Beginning and the Ending, you can do so by sending a gift of $20 or more. That includes the cost of shipping. Just call the number on the screen and place your call Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time, or you can place your order through our website at lamblion.com. The presentation runs one hour in length and is fully illustrated with PowerPoint slides from beginning to end. This is a very important presentation that you need to share with Sunday school classes and home Bible study groups. The message will challenge all viewers to take God's Word for its plain sense meaning from the beginning of the Bible to the end. And as such, it will build confidence that the Bible truly is the Word of God and is totally reliable in all that it says. Again, just call the number you see on the screen and ask for the presentation by name, the beginning and the ending. Or you can place your request through our website at lamblion.com. Christ in Prophecy is made possible through the faithful and generous support of viewers like you. Please consider making a donation to Lamb and Lion Ministries so that we can continue broadcasting the message of Jesus' soon return. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you for joining us on today's Christ in Prophecy, a presentation of Lamb and Lion Ministries, a non-denominational ministry dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of biblical prophecy and proclaiming the soon return of Jesus.